has and is the covenant healer of his people. Healing and deliverance is God's covenant provision and blessing for his people. Receive your covenant blessing of healing and deliverance. All right, so this morning to help us in our declaration, Karen, Susanna, one of our young leaders, she'll lead us uh, in our declaration. Good morning, everyone. Uh, are you ready to declare God's word into your life? Okay, so how many of us can boldly say that we've never experienced any hardship, any difficulties in our lives? No one, right? So all of us have had hard times and uh, might even still be going through some uh, difficult moments. Anxiety, fear, depression, confusion. And during these times, uh, very often we don't know what to pray for. And sometimes we don't even feel like praying. So the best thing that we can do during these times is to just declare God's word over your life. Just have faith and declare his word. So to speak in faith is not to deny the existence of a mountain or the fierceness of a prevailing storm. Rather, faith speaks to the mountain, denying its right to continue standing in the way. So the key thing here is to speak in faith. Uh, and without faith, we can do nothing. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 58, we read that even Jesus could do nothing without faith in his own hometown. Uh, Jesus couldn't do many miracles because of the lack of faith there. Uh, can we all turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 11, verse 23? And let's read together. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that all these things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So I encourage you to speak to your situation, speak to your problems boldly in faith, and declare what God has promised to do. The Bible is filled with promises and encouragements from God. So all we have to do is just to uh, trust in him and, and be bold and with faith just declare his promises over your situations and your problems. Okay, can we stand to our feet to make, make our declaration? You can say this with me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I walk in the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the spirit. I manifest the more glorious ministry of the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. The last Sunday of each month, uh, we, uh, for some time now, a couple of years maybe, uh, we've set it aside as Supernatural Sunday, a time when we just talk about our great, big, mighty, powerful gods and just believe for him to meet the needs of people, to heal, to deliver, uh, and to work miracles. Amen? Our God is alive. Otherwise, there's no point in us sitting here. 
Might as, might as well have stayed home. Our God is a living God. Our God hears, answers prayer. Our God is able to move in our life situations. He's able to intervene. He's able to heal us, deliver us, and do wonders for us. Amen? So why don't you just say this with me? My God's alive. I say it like he's alive. My God's alive. He's really alive. Amen? And so we want God to show himself alive. Uh, in our midst, in real ways, in tangible ways. And so uh, each of these, uh, these last Supernatural Sundays, we just preach a very simple message um, that will build our faith. And then we pray, we take testimonies, and we just let God do what he wants us to do. And before we get into the message, I just want to read out one testimony that came in. This came in by email on the 14th of February. That was two Sundays ago. Um, when we were talking about um, that, the series on um, overcoming, and we would, we, that Sunday the message was on crucifying the flesh. That yeah, was it. What was it? Yeah, I think that was the title. I forget the exact title. I think it was crucifying the flesh or something like that. Uh, so those two Sundays ago. And uh, but here's a very interesting testimony. Uh, and this person is very, uh, uh, very open about his, uh, what was happening. He said. Uh, to whom this concerns, this message was perfect timing for me. I was on my phone, tempted to watch pornography, and instead listened to a hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. In the related video section, this is on YouTube, so in the related video section, your, your video happened to show up as a live sermon, which was strange since in Houston, Texas, it is currently 1.20 a.m. I clicked on it anyway, and did I ever hear the message I needed? There is also another big picture, in, uh, big picture issue in life that I'm dealing with, which that first lady, he was referring to Jean, uh, at the end prayed about uh, that was al almost word for word, my heart was pleading to God. Through her, God reminded me I can be fully redeemed and the dry land will become a pool once again. I'm truly amazed how Christ can connect believers across time zones. I'm amazed that in a church so far away, we can still fight the spiritual battles together as believers. Then he says, thank you. He thanks all of us. And he says, your Houston, Texas friend. Amen. So can you imagine that Sunday, right? While all this was happening here in Bangalore, God was using this to minister to some individual over there in Houston, Texas. Tell your neighbor, if somebody's sitting next to you, God knows your name. He knows the hair that's on your heads. He knows everything about you. Amen? And how God uses, you know, whatever is there, the technology that's available, to just meet somebody so far away uh, at their moment of need and, and speak into their lives and, you know, minister to them. So that, thank God um, for technology and thank God for how he orchestrates things. Of course, we do our best in, um, you know, providing the best we can uh, in terms of uh, making use of technology. But thank God for the hand of God. The, the finger of God, uh, the handiwork of God that orchestrates these things, which we can't. And he uses that to bless people's lives. This morning, I want to just talk to us very briefly on, uh, remind us about God, our covenant healer. Just to remind us that the God we serve is covenant healer. Just remind us about that, and then we're going to pray and ask the Lord to do wonderful things in our lives and the lives of those watching, and, uh, and just expect Him uh, to work healings and miracles. You know, our God is a covenant God, and, and we've, we've done that. We've studied His Word uh, to understand that God is a God of covenant. Covenant simply means he, it's a solemn promise. A covenant is simply a solemn promise. God makes a covenant. He makes a solemn promise. And the purpose of God's covenant, uh, why does God make covenant? The purpose of covenant is to bring us into relationship with him. And eventually bring us to a place of 
intimacy or a closeness, a close relationship with him. God established a covenant with Abraham. And eventually Abraham was known as the friend of God. A place of closeness with God. Right? So the purpose of covenant is relationship, an intimate relationship. And the Bible tells us, teaches us that the highest form of covenant is the blood covenant. You see, today many of us are used to a covenant in a different uh, in different terms. Usually when you sign a contract, what you are doing is you are making a covenant. You're signing it with, the, with ink and you're, with your name across the paper and saying, I'm making a covenant. If it's a, a, le a rental agreement, you're making a covenant. You know, whether it's an 11 month or a two year or whatever duration it is, you're making a covenant and you're signing it. And it's, a, and it's a contract. So our understanding of covenant usually is in the form of a contract, whether it's, you know, and, and, and we have contracts in different uh, situations, scenarios. But the Bible tells us that the highest form of covenant is the blood covenant. Because the blood represents life. So you're saying... I'm putting all my life behind this. A blood covenant is a life for life covenant. Are you with me? Right? When you sign it by uh, your name on a paper, uh, well, that's only as good as you know, whatever you're committing to. So I'm signing so that I'll, I'll make this payment every month. That covenant is valid only for that. But when you make a blood covenant, a blood covenant simply means it's life for life. The two parties are covenanting life, blood covenant. So the blood covenant is the highest form of covenant and God, our God, establishes blood covenant. So we all know some of the blood covenants in the Bible and I'll just remind us of that. So God made a blood covenant with Abraham and God called Abraham in Genesis 12. Uh, today we are just preaching so you don't have to turn in your Bibles, just listen. Uh, when God made a covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12, uh, God called Abraham. He said, Abraham, come. I'm going to uh, make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. So God called Abraham. And then in Genesis 15, God established his covenant through blood. In Genesis 15, uh, God tells Abraham to take some animals and birds and cut them in between. And God passes through those pieces uh, of, that were cut. And in effect, he's putting in a blood covenant with Abraham. And the, the covenant with Abraham is simply this. I will bless you. I will give this land to you and your descendants. And then in Genesis 17 verse 7, God says, I will bless all your descendants after you in their generation. So here's a blood covenant that he made with Abraham. That he's saying, this covenant will be in force for all your descendants in their generation. Genesis 17 verse 7. He put a blood covenant in place. We see the same thing happen with the people of Israel. We know this. He brought them out of Egypt. And that night was a very important night. Uh, when they cut the Passover lamb. They applied the blood of the Passover lamb to the doorpost of their house. And they ate the lamb. In some ways signifying, speaking of Christ himself. Because in 1 Corinthians 5, 5, 5, 6. Paul says, Christ of a Passover was sacrificed for us. But going back to that, that first night, Exodus 12, when they cut the Passover lamb and applied the blood and they ate the, the, lamb, the, blood, the, the, the meat of the lamb and they were delivered out of Egypt and they began to journey into the land that God said, I will take, I have prepared for you. As they made their journey, God, Revealed himself by covenant names to his people. Three days after they crossed the Red Sea. Three days journeying through the wilderness. They came to a place called Mara. Here the, there were waters but the waters were bitter. They couldn't drink it. And so they cried out to God and God told Moses. Moses take the tree. Take a tree. Cut it. Throw it into the waters. And the waters became sweet. And at that moment. When he turned bitter waters to sweet, which in, in the natural was, was what we would today say prophetic. It was speaking profoundly of something God wanted to reveal to them. At that moment, he said, he gave them this promise in Exodus 15, 26, which we just read earlier during worship time. He said, if you will diligently hear the voice of the Lord your God 
and take heed to do his commandments. He said, I will put none of these diseases which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, a side note. When God said, I will put none of these diseases, doesn't mean God is the originator of sickness and disease. God is not the author of sickness and disease. There is no sickness and disease in heaven. But what happened in Egypt was a case of judgment. In judgment, all those things happened to them. But what God is telling his people is, none of those diseases will ever come on you because I am Jehovah Rapha to you. All you've got to do, obey me. Listen to my voice, obey me. Amen? No disease. No disease will come on you. Because I am your Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord, your healer. Now the word Jehovah is God's covenant name. Or we refer to it as a covenant title because along with that we have many Jehovah titles. But that name Jehovah simply means, it, it is referring to the eternal, self-existent, unchangeable one who keeps his promise, who keeps covenant. That's Jehovah. So whenever you say Jehovah, you're saying my God is the eternal, self-existent, unchangeable God who keeps promise. Jehovah, covenant God. And he said, I am Jehovah Rapha, covenant healer. That's your God. That means he's promised to be your healer. To such a measure, to such a degree, where he said, no disease will come near you. Amen? And think about this. He repeats this. If you, in Exodus 23, 25 and 26, Moses once again tells the people, he says, And you will serve the Lord your God. And he will bless your rice and sambar. <laughs> or, I don't know what, but that's not there, okay? He will bless your bread and your water. Or if you're from North India, you know, your chapati or your pulkas or whatever. <laughs> he will bless your bread and your water. And what did he say? And I will take all sickness away from your midst. Who's speaking? Covenant healer. Jehovah Rapha is speaking. I will take all sickness away from your midst. That's our God. Amen? And then he continues in verse 26. He says, And there will be no one who is barren. Uh, there is no one who will suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. And, I will, and the number of your days I will fulfill. Or it's in other ways you put it in modern English. And you will live a long life. That's God's promise to his people. He promised that to his people under the old covenant. He established a blood covenant uh, with the people of Israel. That's, you read about that in Exodus 24. Moses sprinkled the blood on, his pe on these people and said, this is the blood of the covenant that God is setting up with you. So God established a blood covenant with Abraham. He established a blood covenant with the people of Israel, a blood covenant. And part of that covenant, he said, I am the Lord your healer. I will take sickness away from your midst. I will bless the food that you eat so that you will be healthy. There will be no sickness in you. Uh, no one will suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. And uh, he said, I will give you a long life. That's part of his covenant for his people. Now, look at this. When the Lord Jesus ministered on the earth, he did come to bring in a new covenant. But until his death and resurrection. The new covenant did not come into effect. So prior to his death and resurrection. The Lord Jesus ministered under the old covenant. So all the people that he was ministering to. He was ministering to them. On the basis of the old covenant covenant 
And I just want to bring our attention to two of his miracles that he did. And see what happened. As he ministered under the old covenant. The first one we read about is, uh, that we will look at is in Luke 13. It's about this woman who had been bent over for 18 years. So she had this condition. She was bent over 18 years. And you can just imagine, 18 years, every Sabbath, she came to the synagogue. She worshipped God. She heard the word of God being read. But she came in with that problem. She went back with that problem. 18 years. She came to worship covenant healer, Jehovah Rapha. She came in with a problem into the synagogue, went home with a problem. But that particular Sabbath, Jesus was there. He saw this woman and he said, hey, she is a daughter of Abraham. She is a daughter of Abraham. Very significant. Because God made a blood covenant with Abraham. And he said, I will bless you. And I will bless all your descendants after you in their generation. Which means that Abraham, covenant with Abraham was in effect on that day and for her. So what did Jesus do? He released her. He said, Satan has bound her. Her problem was not God's blessing in her life. So I don't know what the scribes and the Pharisees, the Bible teachers or the, the teachers of her day would have explained her, how they would have explained her situation to her. I don't know. It's not recorded. But we could just imagine they would have said, this is God's blessing for you. This is your thorn in the flesh. I don't know how they would have explained it to her. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, Satan has bound this woman for 18 years. And she has a right to be loosed from this bond. She is a daughter of Abraham. And that moment he said, woman... You are loosed from your infirmity. And what held her for 18 years left her and she became straight. And the basis of Jesus ministering to her was the covenant with Abraham. Because there is this covenant, she should not be like this. She should be delivered. So I want us to understand that as part of the covenant, there is the provision for healing and for deliverance. It's your provision. It's part of the covenant. And let nobody tell you that you cannot receive it. It's God's covenant with you. It's signed in blood. It's a blood covenant. He will not back off on that. It's part of your blessing. It's part of his provision for you. Healing and deliverance. And that's what Jesus did for this woman. There's another miracle that we want to look at, which is in Matthew, the 15th chapter. And here, there is a, a non-Jewish woman, a Canaanite woman, a Gentile. Meaning she is not a daughter of Abraham. She is not part of God's covenant people at that time. She was not part of it. And she has heard about all the miracles that Jesus is doing. How he's healing and how he's delivering the people. And she knows she is not part of the house of Israel. She knows she is not a Jewish woman. But she says, you know what? I have no other hope. I'm going to ask Jesus to heal my daughter anyway. And so she makes a way to Jesus and his disciples are around him and, and, and they try to, you know, uh, so, you know, try to keep her away. But she gets past them. She comes to Jesus. She, she, you know, she cries out and she says, my daughter is troubled by demons. She's at home. Can you heal her? Now Jesus responds and says, 
I can't give the children's bread to the dogs. Now, that sounds very harsh for us in our language today. But basically, what he was simply saying is, I can't take the children's bread and give it to those outside the covenant. But what does this woman do? She says, Lord, just give me a crown. Just give me a crown. And Jesus you know, commends her faith. He says, woman, great is your faith. Be it to you as you will. In Matthew 15, 28, he says, be it unto you as you will. What I want to place the emphasis on is the phrase, the children's bread. What's he saying? He's saying healing and deliverance is the children's bread. It's, it's what belongs to the people of covenant. Now imagine, for those of us who are parents, you know, what is children's bread? Well, just think about a scenario at home. The parents put bread on the table. For what? For show? Take Instagram, put a photo on Instagram. <laughs> Here, a nice photo. I joke with my wife. I don't know if they ever love to say this, but you know. <laughs> Whenever she makes a nice dish, I know it's going to go on Instagram. <laughs> so even before she completes a dish, I'll say, take photo, take photo. <laughs> it's got to go on Instagram. Anyway, back to the message. <laughs> so why do they put bread on the table? Not for show. Sure. It's meant for the children to eat. And no parent is going to say, don't eat. That's only, only half a slice. No. Eat whatever you want. Eat as much as you want. It's the children's bread. Children, come enjoy. Take it. It's on the table. And God is saying, healing, deliverance is the children's bread. It's the bread for God's covenant people. So what Jesus was saying is, look, this is the children's bread. I can't take it and give it to people who are not in covenant. But she says, just give me a crumb. Just give me a crumb. It's enough. And Jesus didn't say no. He gave it anyway because that was going to be part of God's program that would come into place right after his death and resurrection where the Gentiles would also receive the blessing. So two things. Under the old covenant, both these, scenario, both these situations, under the old covenant, healing was for his people, God's people. That woman who was troubled by a spirit of infirmity and in that condition for 18 years, Jesus said, she has her, she has a right to be healed. Because as part of God's covenant with her, there is provision for her healing and for her deliverance. By referring to healing and deliverance as the children's bread, Jesus was communicating to us that it's part of the covenant. It's something you and I can access and take. God wants us to partake of it. Don't sit at the table and stare at the bread. Don't sit at the table and admire the bread. Take as many slices as you want. Amen? And this woman, Canaanite woman, showed us how to take it by faith. By faith. Amen? Now, this happened under the old covenant. But we all know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he shed his blood, and he was resurrected, and he ascended into heaven, he put in place a new covenant. That is also a blood covenant. Meaning it's life for life. He gives us everything. And he says, I want your everything. Life for life. It's also a blood covenant. But what the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, the Bible says, so much more he has established a better covenant on better promises. That means the covenant that you and I have today with Almighty God is a covenant that is better than the old covenant. If under the old covenant, healing and deliverance was so available for the people of God, 
the covenant people, how much more is healing and deliverance available for you and me, people in the new covenant? Amen? It is there. It's God's provision. It's God's blessing for you and me. And this provision for healing, this provision for deliverance covers everything. Everything. Every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every abnormality, uh, whether it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a birth defect, whether it's an, uh, a mental health issue, whatever, it's all covered. Nothing excluded. He said, none of these diseases. I will take away from you all sickness. Amen. So I just want us to understand, those of you watching online, I just want us to understand that our God is covenant healer. And today, as part of your covenant with God, as part of our covenant with God, healing and deliverance is ours. And by faith, we're going to receive it. Amen? Now, we are not, and I've said this many times, we are not against doctors. We are not against medicines. Do that if you want to. But remember, there's bread on the table that you and I can partake of. Amen? And by faith, we receive. Worship team, please come. By faith, we're going to receive. Pastors can join us as well. Yeah. So what we're going to do is very simple. See, the word of God produces faith in our hearts. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This very moment, there's faith in your heart because you have heard the word. So you are ready to receive from God by faith. Say, Lord, I receive my healing. I receive my healing. And we're going to pray and say, Lord, we take this. When Jesus stepped into that synagogue, he came as, a, as one who was anointed by God and who knew what was available for God's covenant people. Many times the reason God's people are still in bondage, they're still in captivity, is because of a lack of knowledge. And we know this in Hosea 4, 6, Isaiah 5, 13. He says, my, uh, my people are gone into captivity. My people are in bondage for a lack of knowledge. They don't know. They haven't heard the word. That's why they're in that condition. And maybe that was the reason why she was that way for 18 years. Nobody told her. Nobody preached the truth to her. But that day, Jesus stepped in. The anointed one who said the truth, who spoke the truth. She's a daughter of Abraham. Today, you've heard the word. You've heard the truth. And God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, is ready to make that provision and that blessing a manifested reality. Meaning, let it happen in your body or your mind, wherever you need that. So as we sing, as we pray, as we engage with God, I want you on the basis of your covenant, say, God, I believe, on the basis of my covenant with you through the blood of Jesus Christ, I believe that you provided for my healing and my deliverance. So today I receive it. I believe it's a children's bread. You're not, the father is not keeping it away from you. The, no father will keep the, children's, the bread away from the children. So God is not keeping this away from you. He's not teasing you. You know, you put your hand there, he moves the plate. Sorry. He's not teasing you. In fact, he's probably bringing it to you and saying, please take as many slices as you want. So this morning, by faith, you and I are going to receive. We're going to pray. As we pray, we believe the anointing of God and the work of God will be released to you right where you are. You and I, we, you and us, we will connect in faith and receive. 
and do not put any limitation on God. There's nothing impossible with God, nothing he cannot do. So don't put God in a box and say, oh, he can only do these miracles. No, take all the limitations off. Say, God, the miracle I need, you will perform. For those of you who may not you know, have an issue with physical health or mental health, physical healing, but you're probably in a different situation, a life situation, maybe it's a financial situation, some other life situation which is difficult. The blood covenant affects that as well. And I'm just mentioning this in passing. In, in Zechariah chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, God speaks to his people and he says, Because of my blood covenant with you, I will deliver you from your captivity. I will bring you out of this waterless pit. And I will restore you to your place of strong, your stronghold, meaning your place of strength. And I will give you double blessing. I've just paraphrased it, but it's there in Zechariah 9, 11 and 12. He says, because of my blood covenant, I'll bring you out of captivity. I'll bring you out of that, that situation that's like a, like a waterless pit. And I will bring you into your stronghold and I will bless you double. That means the blood covenant covers every situation. Amen. So you may not be in a situation where you need physical healing. You may be in a different situation. The blood covenant covers it. And today, you can look to God and say, God, I have a covenant with you. And as part of my covenant with you, you have promised to bring me out of this difficulty. You promised to bring me out of this pit. You promised to bring me out of captivity. And you promised to bring me to a place of strength. You promised to bring me to a place where I will have double honor, double blessing. So on the basis of that same blood covenant, you can receive. Amen. It's provided. So, what we are going to do a few moments from now is as we pray, I want us to expect things to happen right here and right now. Expect. Yes, sometimes healing happens as a process. I am not excluding that. But we want it the way it happened in the Bible. When you look at the ministry of Jesus, when he prayed for people, other than just one instance, which probably took maybe 10 minutes, I don't know. Other than that one instance, every other miracle Jesus did happened right then, right there. And that's what we want. We say, God, we want heal. I'm, I'm not against healing that happens as a process. We believe in that and we rejoice in that. But let's increase our expectation. There's nothing wrong to have an expectation of what you see in the Bible. You're not being sacrilegious. You're just being biblical. Amen. And the biblical thing is they were healed right then. So let's bring our expectation, the level of our expectation to the level of God's word. So say, Lord, right here, right now, we want to see healings and miracles. Thank God for the healings and miracles that may take place as a process. But Lord, we want to see now miracles. We want to see now healings because that's what we see in the Bible. Amen. Can we lift our expectation a little up? And say, God, right here, right now, we want to see people come forward and testify of things that happened right here, right now. We want to see testimonies being put up on the, the live chat, which are wherever, whatever platform you're, you're watching us. We want to see those testimonies coming up online. Right here, right now. Amen? Now, if it happens as a process, that's perfectly fine. We're not in any way diminishing its importance. But let's lift our expectation because our God is able. Amen. So we're going to pray simple prayers. And during that time, just as an act of your faith, if you want to, you can lay your hand on that part of your body you want Jesus to heal. 
Just put your hand there and say, Lord, heal this part of my body. This is between you and God. And say, Lord, just, you know, just put your hand there. Just say, Lord, heal me here. If it's, you're praying for somebody else, that's perfectly fine. The Canaanite woman came on behalf of her daughter who was at home. So you might be praying for somebody somewhere else, and that's perfectly fine. Just pray for them and say, God, I want to see that healing take place. And if you are in the auditorium and you experience a healing right now, don't be ashamed. Let's boast about our Lord. Let's boast about Jesus. Just come right up. Uh, we'll have some mics here, and you can just tell us quickly what happened. And if you're online, don't feel ashamed. Just share it on the chat. This is what Jesus did right now. Amen? Are we ready? Let's rise to our feet, please. Let's rise to our feet. We're going to sing uh, that same little song that we sang, that chorus. I am the Lord that healeth thee. This time you personalize it. You say, you are the Lord who heals me. Right? We will sing it that way. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. And you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Sing it that way. And as we sing that, maybe, you know, two or three times we we'll sing it. During that time, I want you, as, as part of your faith in God, reaching out and receiving. Because you do have a covenant with God. You are in the right place, in the right position before God to receive His provision, His blessing. So I, let that song be an expression of how you receive from God. Let's sing it. You are the God that He left me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. On every hand, lift it up. Let's make that a prayer. Declaration. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. I hear you one more time. Yeah. You are the Lord. Jesus to heal. If you're praying for somebody else, if you can, lay your hands on them. Or if they're far some other place, just lift their name up to the Lord. If you're watching online, and if you're in a hospital somewhere, just as an expression of your faith, you say, Lord, I am connecting with that prayer that's going to be prayed in that place. Father, we thank you for your holy word. Your word is truth. Your word is your power. You have sent your word. It reminds us that 
healing and deliverance is part of that covenant. It's our children's bread. And so each one of us standing here are standing under that provision, under that blood covenant. Those listening, they're standing under that blood covenant. So right now, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I take authority over every evil work, every demonic work, every work of sickness, disease, infirmity, and in the name of Jesus, I declare it broken. I break every sickness, every yoke of sickness, disease, torment, oppression, every bondage, every spirit of addiction, every controlling spirit. I take authority over you, devil, and I command these spirits that are oppressing and tormenting God's people to leave now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, let there be healing. Receive your healing. If you've suffered a stroke in some part of your body, you're unable to move, try to move it now. Just try to act your faith. Just do it. Let life flow in to your body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Or maybe you had surgery around your brain and, and that has left part of your functions impaired. Receive healing now in the name of Jesus. Let life flow and let it be a complete restoration of those functions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, for all people inside the auditorium, whatever their conditions are, let healing take place right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let healings take place. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. Billy and Jane, you want to just go ahead and share whatever's on your heart. Minister as the Spirit leads, do that. And then we're going to take testimonies. Thank you, Lord. I want to call out two things. The first one, uh, I'm, I'm seeing women, but if, the, if it, this applies to men as well. Um, joints, especially the fingers. Just the difficulty to um, bring them out, extend it. Especially in the mornings when you take your first step, uh, there's excruciating pain on the, on the heel. I just want to declare that God's word oils those joints, Amen. those, um, uh, those fingers and those heels that are utterly painful. We just speak um, God's oiling word right now and his healing power right now Amen. into uh, whoever this applies to. The second thing uh, I have is um, uh, someone who's lost something. It could either be someone who's lost a relationship, someone who's lost probably independence in a situation, uh, pride. Uh, as Pastor was talking uh, of giving the word of, in Zechariah, he will restore you back to strength. You may have felt that that thing that you've lost has uh, sapped you of your strength, sapped you of anything that you can live for. But, but God's word says he will restore you back to strength. He will give back double portion to you. You may feel that those needs have, have gone, have, have been lost, have, will never be met again. But his word says he will restore you back to strength. You will come back on your feet. You will get much more than you'd ever, ever wanted or ever wished for. I, uh, just speak that and just receive it today as, as we continue to pray. I just want to pray for um, people with uh, any kind of blood uh, condition, uh, especially if, you're, uh, if you've got anemic blood or uh, just reports uh, from, from the doctor. Or, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, there, even people who've, who've got, who've been told that your blood is impure. 
uh, and if that's you if, uh, if anybody relates to this uh, just raise a hand I want to pray for you I want to declare the, the word of the Lord over you that you are healed in Jesus name if there's anyone here I don't see any yeah okay the yeah, just yeah I just want to declare the word of God over you Father, I thank you, Lord. You are the one who purifies us inside and whole. I thank you, O oh God, that, Lord, by your blood, we are cleansed, we are made whole. And I just declare your healing over your people, O oh God. I just thank you for uh, every person, uh, Lord, that you are restoring them out of this condition. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for this, Lord. Thank you, man. Amen. I just also felt that uh, there's someone who's uh, who gets uh, recurring uh, dreams. Uh, uh, you're a little, little troubled by it, uh, but I believe this is uh, the Lord is speaking to you through this. Uh, you know, even if it's uh, troubling, uh, if, if anybody identifies with this, uh, you can just raise a hand. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. I see a couple of you. Uh, uh, just want to declare that uh, the Lord speaks. Is, 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 he's, he's, he's speaking to you through, through this. I uh, just uh, want to ask you to pay attention if this recurs again. And uh, uh, the Lord is sending a message to you. He, the Lord is the one who speaks. And he speaks to us even through our dreams. Uh, and I just want to declare that uh, this opens up. Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, the, uh, uh, let our understanding open up. I, I pray for uh, both these people, Lord God, that they're... Uh, their minds open up to the message of God that you're releasing to them. I thank you for, for speaking to them, oh God. I thank you, Lord. You, you are the one who communicates. And I pray, oh God, that they receive the, the message in full, that, Lord, that they receive it uh, uh, and, and act on it, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Anyone, you have a testimony right now. Something happened to you right here, right now, and you have a testimony. Just raise your hand. Just come on up. We just want to uh, just hear. Something happened to you right here, right now. Just come up. Share what God's done. Okay. We just want to create that sense of celebration and, uh, you know, just that, look, God is doing things. So if something's happened to you right now, and you can say it happened to me. Just come on up. Uh, just walk right up. Anyone? Usually it takes one person to take the step and then others will follow. But okay, I see one person coming up. Yeah, Stephen, wouldn't you just say? Um, yeah, as uh, Sister Jean was uh, sharing about... Uh, uh, pain in the fingers um, she also said about the heel I don't have any pain in the heel but from past few weeks when I used to get up in the morning uh, four fingers from my right hand I couldn't bend mm. it's just for the first one or two minutes and then throughout the day there was no pain at all it's just every morning for the first two three minutes I just couldn't bend my finger and I have been praying about it for so many weeks uh, every day mm. And it's not that in the past I haven't experienced healing. Um, I have. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, God, why isn't this happening? Um, so today when I came, I will just bring specifically for this. Amen. I just want to thank God. So Amen. though it's going to be in the morning. Today, yes, I yes. Believe, but I do believe. Amen. So just Praise to God. God. Amen. So God knows each person. God knows what's happening. And you will see that happening. God bless you. What happened here? Yeah, they will turn it on. Go ahead. My, uh, my hand was sprained, my finger down. And I couldn't do many things. I could not play badminton. The best, but just, I was feeling bad. So today, I, I, I literally uh, felt it coming out. And I was yawning. And now I can... You can, you can move your hand? I can do. Amen. I can do. So Amen. my hand, fingers are healed. Amen. Thank God. God. Bless. Praise God. Bless. Bless. Amen. 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 Man, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Anyone, anyone else? You, something happened to you right here, right now. You can come and testify. So two people with hand conditions were healed right here, right now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Anyone else? Anyone else? 
Okay. I'm not sure if anything's happening on the live chat, but I will try to connect to that uh, next time so we can see what's happening there. All right. Now, when you go back home and uh, you see the healing manifest, something happens. What we encourage people to do, of course, is to verify it, check it. If you need to go to a doctor, we don't, you know, go ahead and do that. If you need to do medical examinations, go ahead and do that. And uh, when you know that, you know, uh, healing has taken place, please feel free to send it in as a testimony. So you can just send it to testimony at apcw.org, send it in, and we will receive it. We'll be able to share it across our locations, just celebrate with you, uh, give thanks to God for that. Amen? Now, before we dismiss, I just want to pray, you know, uh, uh, for uh, children, uh, or, or those who've been born, uh, you know, with uh, mental health issues. I've been uh, uh, interacting with parents um, who, who have children suffering either from autism or maybe advanced cases, um, uh, other mental health conditions. They've been born that way. And, uh, you know, it's not easy, but God can heal. It's not easy how bring them up, but it's but our God can heal, right? So we're going to pray as a church. I know these four kids that I'm thinking of right now. I don't know. You may know of some children that who need who need this, this prayer. I just want you to lift their names up to before God. Humanly speaking, nothing can be done. Humanly speaking, right? Maybe they can do some therapy. They can do some of those kinds of things. But to make them whole, complete, it's very difficult. But God can. So we're going to pray. And I, we're just going to lift the names of these children up before God. And say, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, who created all things, restore these children perfectly normal. They should have a good future. They should be able to get jobs. I mean, of course, do their education, get jobs, live complete lives. Can we do that before we dismiss? If you know of children or you know of people, I know of four. You may know of some. Lift their names up to God. Father, we as a church community, we as believers, we pray especially, God, for children who've been born this way. This is not your design. You're the God who makes all things well. And we speak against every evil work that has affected their mental development, affected their brains, affected the genes. We speak against every evil work. We command it to leave and we command wholeness to come into their lives. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let them be made whole. And God, let them grow up. Let them get a good education. Let them live complete and whole lives. And we speak wholeness. We speak wellness into their lives. And we thank you for these miracles. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to close. God is continuing to work in each of our lives. And as you experience wonderful things, share your testimony so we can share it with others and just celebrate with you. Father, we give you thanks for this morning. Thank you for the time that we could just spend together in your presence, in your word, and under the ministry of your Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit continue with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.